Good evening, everybody. Time Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully, everyone's doing well. It's weird taking a break, but uh, it was one that was much needed. The last couple of days have been relatively quiet. I mean, there's been storms here and there and a couple of tornadoes. Uh, there was one day that was a little bit more active over towards the northeast. But the good news is, is, just like we mentioned in the last video, we're expecting a bit of a slowdown. And that's going to actually become more apparent as we go further into the weekend here. Right now, it's still pretty busy. We actually have an enhanced risk for severe weather today. This is mainly a damaging wind and hail threat. Been a decent amount of reports, but it's been staying relatively light. The one tornado report we did get today is actually to over towards South Georgia. We do have a stationary front over the region there and storms have been firing. I can actually go ahead and show you that real quick. And here is that said stationary front. And you can see an increase in shower and storm activity across the southeast as a whole. And that is going to continue throughout the weekend with this boundary, of course, not moving. Here's our current severe weather situation over here. All severe thunderstorm warnings, no tornado warnings right now. Uh, there are some chasers that are moving over towards the region at this moment. Haven't seen any gusts above 60 miles per hour, thankfully. Let's hope that that continues throughout the night. The threat is anticipated to decrease over time here. So as we go further along here, this was where our enhanced risk was today. Like I said, wind threat had a hatch risk to go with it, but so far it doesn't look like much has really come of it. Did have a 15% hail threat, but we're now seeing that threat push further off to the south into that marginal risk region where the severe weather threat is expected to further lessen from that point. Then from there, we only see marginal risk on uh, Saturday at the moment here. This is interestingly enough over towards uh, north eastern parts of New Mexico and then also over towards the uh, Carolinas we could have marginal chances of shower storm activity across the uh, across the board here though across a large portion of the US there is a chance of storms here in this light green region uh, not necessarily a shoe in this is pretty low chances for the most part unless you have a frontal boundary some and or a low pressure area which is you saw on the map if you're in the proximity of that you have a shot but as we go towards day three notice no severe and then if you go even further beyond that potential too low is now a thing at long last we've been waiting for this to happen especially with as long of a severe weather season as we've had here so some good news here to put out for you guys in any case though despite severe weather slowing down the heat's still going to be a f factor here a very prevalent topic over the course of the next 8 to 14 days we have a couple areas where there's a moderate risk of hazardous temperatures, excessive heat, particularly over towards the northern plains and over towards the northeast. We could see some well above average temperatures over here. Of course, we can actually take a look at the temperature outlook here. This is heading into August here. You can see that we have a probability of about 60 to 70 percent chance of above average temperatures for the region. And then interestingly enough, and this kind of correlates well with what's going on over towards the northwest as well. You can see over towards Alaska, we actually have a pretty uh, strong signal of a below average temperatures, which is kind of interesting. Big pattern flip beginning to occur here. You can even see it being prevalent over here across the uh, southern plains here. And if you go through the 6 to 10 day outlook, actually you see that cold air stretching out even further than that, even heading into the southeast here, well into the Mississippi River delta and the region and the mississippi river valley as well but um, you can see across the board here we're starting to see some cool air even into the uh, northwest here to go along with that kind of correlates with, as i was referring to refer before over towards alaska still you can see the above average temperatures likely over here towards the northern plains especially the dakotas northern parts of minnesota maybe even the up of michigan getting into the getting into the uh, high heat here, so to speak. But you can see across the board, we a pattern looks a lot different than what we were talking about maybe about a week ago. And it's going to pretty much continue as we head into the month of August here. There's an outlook that we're going to be making on the channel soon, so look for that. But in any case, though, outside of uh, the temperature hazard here, the precip outlook isn't looking all that bad at the moment. But as we go through weeks three to four, we do start to see a little bit of a shift here as we get into the month of August. It's going to be a little sneak preview, so to speak, as to what the month could look like. But it definitely kind of looks like we're shifting back to the positive PNA type look where we're going to be looking more 
out towards the west for warmer temperatures and while i wouldn't say that we're necessarily going to be dealing with i would say cooler temperatures over towards the southeast it's going to be a little bit cooler than let's say the west but we may prop we're probably going to end up staying above average over here across the board but we might catch a little break over here towards the northeast because a lot of people this year regardless of the region have been sweltered by the heat here and that trend looks like for the most part is going to continue but we might see it begin to wind down a little earlier than expected also taking a look at that precip outlook here definitely seeing a lot more activity over towards the southeast here and it kind of correlates with what we were seeing on radar omega if i actually go ahead and set that into motion here you'll actually begin to see where that moisture is coming from in particular for the southeast a lot of this coming from that gulf of mexico moisture clashing with that front getting the lift generated to get these showers and storms including ones over my area right now and it's going to continue through a good chunk of the evening here but in any case though let's go ahead and take a look at some model data here looking at the upper level jet here like i said not really seeing a storm pattern that's going to be quite as conducive for severe weather we'll still get enough lift at the upper and mid levels to get shower and storm development have enough moisture at the surface to kind of help along with that especially over towards the southeast but beyond that point a lot of ridging going on towards the west if you end up on the down slope of the ridge you might have a shot at a couple of shower thunderstorms over here where the air is still rising but if you're getting sinking if you're getting any uh, sinking air here you might be out of luck as we continue to go forward here actually looks interesting over towards canada in particular maybe we might do a stream for this region if severe weather ramps up over towards the region there especially over towards saskatchewan but as we continue to go forward here you can see these uh areas of high pressure now starting to even moving towards the uh, southeast but i do think that this won't play heavily into what our pattern is going to look like eventually this is going to stop the shower and storm activity thankfully we don't want too much of that because it can get out of hand over towards this region pretty quick as far as flooding is concerned but as we go forward here it definitely has that look of where we're getting into that positive pna pattern here you can see the ridge beginning to develop here this has clockwise flow or anticyclonic flow and over here you can see a little bit of troughing developing over here towards the eastern half of the country so definitely has that look of a classic pna setup we'll have to maybe watch this if uh we see any sort of uptrends for severe weather as we get into august but there's still a lot of questions to be had with that especially with it being 16 days out big impact of this mainly is going to be the temperatures so we're going to go ahead and mainly take a look at that. And like I said before, even though the confidence or the probabilities of above or below average temperatures may be slightly higher or lower depending on your area, it doesn't mean it's going to feel too much different. There may be a point in between here, especially over towards the eastern half of the U.S., where we're a little bit cooler than what we've been. Definitely seeing a difference, of course, over towards the southeast, mainly because of the rain, of course. We're going to continue to see that for the next few days here we're not seeing as much 90s over here we're seeing a large we're seeing a large amount of 80s though just to be about which is about expected close to average maybe just a hair below but it makes a difference as we go forward here we continue to see that trend even as we get in the next week here like i said that stationary boundary just isn't really going anywhere anytime soon hence the name of course but eventually we do start to break through and eventually by it looks like Saturday of next week here, we end up getting those 90s to reemerge across the southeast here. But with the pattern being more active, eventually it does look like we start to see a little bit more in the way of shower and storm activity. So we're going to be kind of in a bit of a uh, flip flop pattern towards the eastern half of the U.S., out west a little bit different we'll actually rewind back here and you can see that it's still very hot that's going to be in large thanks in a large part thanks to that ridge that ridge is going to keep things pretty hot and somewhat stagnant depending on uh, how the moisture flow is we could still get a good bit of moisture and some chances for some thunderstorms here but 
it's very uncharacteristic to see the lack of moisture flow over here towards the southwest usually by this time we start to see a little bit more but as we get later on into the season i do think we'll start to flip and go the other way with it getting more in the way of uh, shower and storm activity over there this guy's definitely needed uh drought concerns over towards this region are arising as well as wildfire threats of course and then as we continue to go forward here it does look like depending on the region here we might have some chances of showers and storms especially over towards new mexico new mexico looks like a uh, point of interest over here as well as parts of maybe even uh, south central parts of colorado we'll have to see how things develop with that i do think the uh, mountains are going to be playing a role in that as well so another thing we can use to look at for reading the potential of shower and storm activity is the lightning flash density. the higher probability the greater chance there are of course of shower and storms so we continue to go forward here you can see that we have a pretty good probability over here towards the uh southwest here actually of course florida is looking pretty busy of course with that stationary front in play draped across the southeast it's going to continue to be a factor and then of course as we continue to go beyond that point the amount of instability that we have during this time of year popcorn thunderstorms are pretty much a thing or at least that's what we call them out towards uh, this region here pop-up showers but in any case though it doesn't surprise me that we still have a pretty good probability of storm development here lightning flash density isn't the most impressive i've seen but it's it lets you know that there's still chances and i think chances will go up as we go further along on this model here especially as we start to head into august and going beyond that point very interesting thing to make note of and this is not necessarily a stroke of the ego or hopefully it's not taken that way but you can actually see over towards canada right now and you can see that system that i was referring to at one point on here you can see the amount of lightning flash density uh, over here 24 flashes a day uh, that's that's a pretty telling sign that things are about to get a little bit spicy over towards that region and you can see it again on the 28th so just a little bit of uh, verification there of my own little quote-unquote hypothesis does look like uh, maybe at some point we might be streaming Canada here so uh, make sure you hit that like button if you're interested in seeing a Canadian stream as well but Last thing we're going to go ahead and take a look at here. It's going to, hopefully this was a quicker video. And we're going to take a look at the uh, precip rate here. Of course, as we mentioned, southeast. No real surprise to see the activity that we're seeing there. Over towards the southwest, we have our chances. But it's going to be kind of hard to pinpoint exactly where these will fall. It's like uh, knocking over... Um, it's like, I, I wouldn't even say knocking dominoes over i would call them maybe throwing dominoes and just trying to see where the uh or throwing poker chips seeing where they fall i'm terrible with analogies i'm sorry <laughs> but like i said east is definitely going to be active throughout the rest of the month out towards the southwest you could get a mixed bag here northeast even starts to get a little bit busier as we go further along here as time goes on over towards the northwest of course a little bit cooler over the next few days but eventually we start to warm back up ever so slightly but i notice again as we get towards the end of the month i'm seeing just ever so slightly a little bit more in the way of activity i do think eventually the monsoon flow starts to come into play as we get into august here i still think it's a little bit of a mixed bag and it's a little bit too early to tell but maybe mark your calendars if you're out towards uh, Mexico and parts of Arizona here as we head towards the end of the month. I would expect maybe a slight change to the weather here. Like I said, kind of hearsay at this point because of how far out we are. 384 hours, a lot of time for things to change. But I'm seeing a little bit more in the way of encouraging signs. I know some of you have been actually in the comments looking for rainfall. Hopefully you get it. But in any case though, that's all I got for you guys. Thanks for letting me ramble to you about the weather. And we'll have an outlook for you for next month tomorrow. Until then, you guys have an awesome rest of your night. And I'll see you next time.